But assuming those those things uh, go well, and then I would see no reason why you would want to uh, go ahead and apply next year. Well, hello, Lucy. Hi. How are you tonight? I'm good. I'm really excited to be here and be talking with you. So. Well, good. So tell me, where are you located? I am currently living in northern Minnesota. So oh. very cold so. winter. Oh my goodness. Is it already pretty cold up there? Yep. Full of snow. My dogs are not oh. happy. <laughs> well, we, uh, we had a cold front come through Austin, Texas this morning and the high was, uh, only 68 degrees. And we were all like, Oh, I need my jacket. It's so cold. So. Yeah, I, th- I think we're at this today. So heat wave. <laughs> oh, wow. That's good. Well, welcome to Am I Ready? Thank you for being with us. Uh, and uh, we're going to look at all your stuff and I'll give you a, an appraisal of kind of where I think things stand and what I think uh, next steps should be and stuff like that. So does that sound good? Sounds great. Good. Well, let we're going to look at your mapped uh, dashboard and uh, kind of look at, see, uh, see where things stand. We'll start off with the uh, the uh, GPA uh, graphs and and kind of go from there. So what we see here is a uh, excellent uh, academic record, um, cumulative GPA of three point nine five, science GPA three point eight four, and uh, it, I think I'm correct in saying you're at Augustus Adolphus uh, College right now. Is that correct? Yep, I'm at Davis Adolphus. Okay. Good. And that's in Minnesota? Yep. It's in Southern Minnesota. Okay. So you're home for the holidays. Yep. Good, 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 good. Excellent. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, Lucy, that you're such a poor student. Uh, this is your first problem, I think. Yeah. Um, obviously, I'm kidding. Uh, now, what is your major there a, a, in college? I am a biology major. Bio. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so you're, um, it looks like there was a, a, and obviously we always want to pay attention to the scale on the, on the Y axis and, yeah. and, uh, <clears throat> you know, keep, keep cognizant, uh, of that, but to tell us a little bit about the dip that we see spring 2019, 20, Yeah, so I think the fall dip was just kind of transitioning from being home to being at college four hours away and really that adjustment. And then spring was definitely the COVID switch from in-person on campus to switching completely online at home. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now you took classes this past summer? Yep. I took physics. Okay. And that obviously went well. Yep. Good, good. Okay. So I think that kind of dip is pretty going to be not unusual for students uh, with the, so I I think that uh, it may well become known as the COVID dip Mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of students in terms of uh, transitioning from, you know, face to face to online education and just all of the stress that was going on with COVID and, you know, everything, uh, is it's been uh, been tough, but mm-hmm. so uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that. I mean, you're you're obviously a good student, and you want to keep up that. And so, uh, just uh, let's make that uh, spring last year be an, an anomaly. Yeah, and uh, I think I think that that would be uh, that would be good. Sounds great. Um, yeah, so cool. So let let's switch over and look at your um, activity hours. So you got the graph there shows quite a bit of stuff. If we could go over to the activities tab on the left side yep. and click on that, and then just uh, we'll just kind of look at uh, at all of that. So it looks like um, community service uh, through. Uh, highway cleanup, good thing to do. Uh, YMCA uh, uh, paid employment. Was that your freshman or sophomore semester freshman, maybe? Um, that would have been was doing my dual enrollment in high school. Oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. Volunteer with uh, several different things, uh, and then tell us a little bit about the PCA, uh, the the employment that you've had there. 
Yeah, so over the summers, I've been working with a young man with autism, working on communication and just daily tasks. And then I'm currently doing that since I'm back home. So I've been helping him with distance learning and that transition as well. Yeah, I'm sure that's been a very rewarding experience. It definitely has been. He's a great kid and I love spending time with him. So it's super that's rewarding. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, shadowing, uh, quite a few hours shadowing looks like you had over uh, several weeks uh, last yeah. January. So how, tell us about that. Yeah, so I got to shadow at my local hospital and clinic and I got to experience a couple different specialties. So I was with orthopedics, I was with obstetric gynecology, I was with family practice, and I was in the ER. So I got to kind of dip my toe in and see what everybody does. And I really, really enjoyed it. No, oh, that's great. The, the Getting that breadth of uh, a viewpoint of, of de- various uh, specialties is really important. I think it probably gave you insight into seeing that different kinds of doctors lives are different, you know, in terms of what they do on a daily basis. Yeah. So that's, that's awesome. Very cool. Uh, Okay. So let's uh, keep going down in that, you know, quite a, quite a bit of uh, different clubs and organizations that you were doing. And uh, um, that's awesome. Uh, Yeah. And then click on the next page and, let us see what's there. I think that was the same page. We, yeah, there we go. Um, great. So age to age, that's interesting to me. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so I worked with a intergenerational garden program, and it was just working on building relationships between the older adults in our community and the younger adults in our community and fostering those relationships. Oh, that's awesome. So I bet yeah. I bet that was very rewarding as well. Yes, it was. Yeah. Our garden was a little, it wasn't the best garden. It was our first time, but we really enjoyed getting to do it. So that was fun. Huh. Yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so you were doing, it looks like you've got some teaching, teaching and tutoring kinds of experiences yeah. with chemistry. So you must be yeah. pretty good in chemistry. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Oregon, awesome. different, different, different kind of chemistry. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, good. And then um, let's see, you do, uh, oh, wow, figure skating. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, I've so been you, in, yeah, I've yeah, been figure skating basically my entire life. So I've continued through college and it's been really fun. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. I, uh, and so that's something that you really enjoy doing, I'm sure. Yep. It's a great stress relief from like school and work and everything to just get out on the ice and take a relaxing breath. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now it looks like also that you, you've had several employment experiences. Um, so you, you worked during college and take it. Yep. So I worked at the Crossroads Convenience and PCA while I was in high school slash college. And then now that I'm in college, I've been working mostly on my breaks, but then also the TA work is paid. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Cool. Okay. Uh, excellent. Um, good. Well, uh, quite a variety of experiences. Um, I think that's, uh, looks, looks good. So let's go, um, now to the MCAT tab on the left side. And uh, so this, uh, tell us where you are in terms of studying for MCAT and and practice tests and stuff like that. Yeah, so I've just kind of started like a little bit sporadically, like looking through my books and starting to study like some review material. And I'm planning on after this semester finishes to take a diagnostic test and then really start studying during January because we have a J term Mm -hmm. and I'm not planning on taking a class. So I'll really study then and then. I'm planning to take it on April 10th, hopefully. And by that time, I'll have the first couple weeks of biochemistry done. And my school has it planned so that the first six weeks cover everything that the MCAT should have. So I'll have all that. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's really, really beneficial. Yeah. Uh, So so that sounds like a a good plan. I think uh, uh, having that, you know, really over the holidays in December, as well as, 
uh, the full January is going to really help you a lot For sure. uh, in terms of review and, and studying and, and practice tests. And then uh, the plan for April sounds good to me. So, yeah, I think that sounds sounds really good. Um, yeah. So let's look back at your dashboard again and uh, let's just kind of get an overview here. So um, uh, let's see. Let's wait for that. There we go. And uh, if if we uh, if we really look at the whole picture here, I think that um, what I see here is that you're a, a very strong student. You were uh, now. Let me just clarify and make sure. I, so you had um, uh, concurrent classes that you did while you were in high school yeah. um, at the community college, and then you spent yeah. uh, a couple of years at the community college before going on to your college experience oh, now so or. I was, my junior year in high school, I started doing the dual enrollment classes, and then I graduated from high school and the college in 2019. Uh -huh. And then the fall of 2019, I started at Gustavus. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. So you 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 did your associate degree at the community college, and then yeah. you went on to yeah. to the Adolphus uh, College. Okay. Got gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Gotcha. Um. Great. So really what I see here is a good picture. Um, what I want to see is um, continuing the kind of work over the course. You know, Now, tell me about this fall semester, how that's going uh, uh, academically. Um, it's been going pretty well. It's definitely been a struggle from going to like at home to on campus back to home. But mm -hmm. I think it's been going pretty well overall. Yeah. And what do you anticipate um, grades are going to look like this fall? Um, Hopefully A's and B's. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, okay. We'll see. Yeah. And what do you, what, uh, you're taking a full load, I take it. Yep. So I'm taking org two with lab, um, cell and molecular biology with lab, and then psychology. Okay, cool. Okay, good. So I want to see, you know, I, that, this is an important issue because because of the dip that we talked about, the what we call the kind of COVID dip, what I want to make sure is that 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 indeed is a COVID dip and not a not a uh, a dip that is going to sort of continue. Uh, this is a concern often when when students change schools, uh, mm -hmm. such as you've done, going from the community college work to to your your four year institution. We mm -hmm. want to see their uh, want to see a consistency. Uh, in other words, you know, we want to see that everything's, everything's looking the same. Mm -hmm. So that that's going to be important both for this semester and then, and then for the spring as well. Um, so I think what I would say is um, the, the other thing I would say is uh, I think that you're, you know, right now it's difficult to get clinical experiences, but I would say mm -hmm. I would like to see you broaden your clinical experiences. Basically, yeah. the clinical experience you have is the approximately three weeks that you did last January in the shadowing at the hospital. Mm -hmm. And beyond the, be, beyond the PCA work that you're doing with the autistic guy, that's really your, the, the, all of your clinical activities. Mm -hmm. Is that is that right? Yeah. So yeah. I, I think that you know the the other I'll, the other um, thing that I would really like to see you extend that in the spring, if at all possible, mm -hmm. with some additional uh, additional activities um, uh, in whether it's shadowing or clinical okay. work or volunteering or you know whatever you can do within yeah. the context of the current situation with COVID. Mm -hmm. Uh, would would be very helpful in your in your application. You've got some clinical work. Uh, it's it's really a, at a one location sort of uh, mm -hmm. extended um, experience. Yeah. So I'd like to see that kind of ex, you know be extended out and and uh, and and, uh, and and have a little bit more there if possible. Uh, yeah. So I I would say so your intention is to apply next May. Or May, yeah, May, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I think, yeah. So the, 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 uh, the three things that I see that I want you to be cognizant of number one is that I want you to, uh, really keep the grades going strongly, uh, at Gustavus, uh, Adolphus 
um, college uh, to be consistent with the work that you did at the community college in yeah. high school. Uh, secondly, obviously, a, an MCAT score that's going to be strongly uh, consistent with the grades uh, to show that you really learned the, the stuff deeply and that you were able to perform on the MCAT to show that you could utilize that knowledge that you learned in the classroom in uh, critical analysis type of ways uh, on the questions on the, on the, on the uh, MCAT. <clears throat> and then thirdly, the extension of some clinical hours. Uh, so those are the three objectives, I think, that I would like to see. So what I would say in terms of your, 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 your readiness for application is, is I'm going to say a yellow light as opposed to a green light or a red light. Yellow light being there's, there's three, you know, sort of question marks. One is the, the grades and want to see that continue. So, you know, good, you know, keep, keep doing well with that. The second is the MCAT. That's a big question mark. For we sure. don't know, you know where, things, where things stand with that. And so we're going to assume yeah. that, that you're going to prepare well and that that's going to go, go well. And then, uh, and then the, the clinical hours. But I think that if we see those things coalesce and really uh, those, things, mm -hmm. those three things come together, then I, th I think absolutely I, I would say you're ready to apply next, uh, next year. And uh, um, so there's, you know, so with those question marks, I, I hope you understand that the caveat is, is there's some unknowns that we need to kind of yeah. understand where things are, but assuming those, those things uh, go well and, and that you're able to, to, uh, to do well in those things, then, then I would see no reason why you would want to uh, go ahead and apply next year. Sounds great. Yeah. Does that, does any of that surprise you? Oh, um, no, I was really thinking that the MCAT was going to be kind of right because I haven't really taken the mm -hmm. last kind of, like crazy exam. And I was a little like thinking that the COVID dip was going to play a factor. So I kind yeah, of expected yeah. it, but it was also really to hear it from an expert. So, yeah, yeah, good, 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 good. Well, best of wishes to you, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. And uh, good you luck too. for the rest of the semester. And uh, and keep keep it, uh, you know, keep in touch with us and keep us up to date. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Lucy.